Oh, hello there and welcome to What The Math. So today I'll be talking about chapter one from IB Math Studies and specifically about set language stuff. Uh, so this is in your chapter one. I believe this is actually one of the first things that you get to read. And it's probably one of the more confusing things because it's essentially tells you that math is a foreign language. There are certain things like grammar and vocabulary that you do have to know. So, and today I'll be um, showing you six specific symbols or let's just call them letters that you have to understand and they will be appearing a lot throughout the IB studies and you will need to know them and remember them but I'll try to help you memorize them so let's start with the first topic so this is all about set and set languages so what is a set essentially you can think of it as a collection of things so for example you know you have uh, let's just say you have a number one and you have a number two and you have a number three and together it's a collection and it, we call that a set and it's usually represented by these funny looking brackets which I believe are called braces and they don't have to be numbers they can be, actually be anything for example it can also be colors so here's an example of three different colors in a set and this, this is a collection of colors uh, in this case it's red blue and green um, now this might not make sense yet it will eventually when you start doing more complicated number stuff in IB studies, uh, but for now just remember that essentially set means collection of things, things together. And when it comes to sets, you really need to know certain symbols, or let's just call them letters or alphabet of math. So one of them looks like this, kind of looks like a little hand, and this will help you remember it better, because what this means is that uh, something belongs to this set. For example, uh, if I say blue right here, Blue belongs to the set that is right here, red, blue, and green, because you see uh, blue is actually inside of the set. However, orange is not part of the set. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll actually use this symbol. So it's a crossed out hand. So in other words, think of the hand not being able to hold the color orange because it's not part of the set. Let's try this example with numbers so that we can get more mathematical. For example, here's another set. So this set contains five numbers, one, two, three, four, and five. Now number three is an element of this set. So in other words, it belongs to the set. So I'm gonna draw a little hand right here so that it makes it a little bit more visual for you. A little hand grabbing the set. And this is how we usually say it. We say, is an element of the set. Element of the set. And you can remember this by looking at the, at the symbol and realizing that it kind of looks like an E. So it's an element of the set. However, number six is not an element of this set. It doesn't, it doesn't exist in this set, so it's not an element of the set. So just to summarize it for you, so here's the set brackets, and here's a little symbol that looks like a hand holding onto the set. This means it belongs to the set, or in other words, that it's an, it's an element of the set. If, however, it's crossed out, it cannot hold to the set. It's not an element of the set. So these are the first two items you should remember. So if it looks like an E, it's an element. If it looks like a crossed out E, it's not an element. All right, let's look at two more symbols. One looks like this, and the other looks like that. This one right here is called union of sets. And this one is called intersection of sets. So what is a union and what is an intersection? Let me give you an example. So imagine there are two sets. One is called A and it contains 1, 2, and 3. And the other is called B and it contains 3, 4, and 5. So if we look at the union of A and B, what do you think it will contain? It will contain the sum of both. It will contain 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So as you can see, 3 is here and 3 is here. So we actually put it here once. So it contains these five numbers. So not three twice, only once. Then if you look at the intersection, A intersection B, what do you think it contains? It contains only the difference between the two. Only the difference, and the difference is number three. So only number three, because that's the only intersection they have. That's the only common number that they have. So sometimes you'll have an intersection where sets contain nothing in common. And in that case, it will be just empty. And to help you remember what these uh, symbols mean, think of union as a kind of a smiley face. Union, you know, happiness, together, and it's a smiley face. Intersection is a sad face. It's an intersection. It's, 
it's sort of like a negative, it's a minus. So union is kind of like the plus, and intersection is kind of like the minus. And sometimes the intersection will actually give you an empty set, and there's a symbol for that as well. So for example, here are two sets, one contains only odd numbers and one contains only even numbers. Now, if we try to find the intersection of these two sets, we are going to get nothing. There's nothing, there's no intersection, they don't have any common numbers. So we call that an empty set, and it can be either portrayed this way, just by empty brackets, or you can just draw this. So it's sort of like a zero with a little stick going diagonally across it. And we call this an empty set. So this is essentially an empty set, it contains no numbers, nothing inside. Now the last symbol I'm going to mention it sort of looks like this. It's sort of like a hand that had a thumb cut out and then it fell on the ground. And yeah, that's not a best example, but essentially what it means is that um, one of the sets belongs to the other set. So for example, this is what I mean. Now sometimes you may see something like this. And what, the way you say this is A is a subset of B. Now let me try to explain to you what this means. Let's assume that A uh, contains 1, 2, and 3. So what this means is that somewhere inside B, there's also 1, 2, and 3. So B could be, so this could be B, or it could be anything else for that matter. So B would contain 1, 2, 3, but also would contain 0, 4, and 5. And this is a subset of B. Now to summarize everything, let's look at all of these symbols together. Now remember the first two symbols, the, the little hands, so that's an element, and usually this would be a unit from the set, so for example, 4 is an element of the set 2, 4, and 6. But 5 is not an element of 2, 4, 6. Then we have the union and the intersection, and the union of 2, 4, 6, and 1, 3, 5, is, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now what is the intersection of 2, 4, 6, and 1, 3, 5? And that's, of course, an empty set, so that's where you, you, you draw that empty set symbol, or the little circle with a stick across it. And that's pretty much it, except for, of course, the last symbol. And the last symbol that we use is the one that describes subsets, and this is an example right here, so 1 and 3. 3 is a subset of 1, 3, and 5. So as you can see, 1 and 3 is right here, so it's a subset of that bigger set. All right, and that's pretty much it for the language of subsets, and that's chapter 1. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.